joyful noise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We magnify you. We extol you, God. The Bible says to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His mercies is everlasting and his truth and endure to all, all generations. Father, we thank you, God. Right now, we come before you with joyful noise. We come before you with thanksgiving. We enter into your gates. We enter into your courts. We've got praise on our lips, worship on our hearts. Why? Because we know you. Why? Because of your truth. Why? Because of how good you are. It's not for what you've done. It's because of who you are. We praise you. We magnify you. We install you. Shift in this place today. Let there be a supernatural, supernatural transference of power from ourselves to you, God. Have your way with us. Make us aware of your presence. We don't usher you in. We become aware because you've already been here. And now we move into you, oh God. Have your way. Activity of the holy and living God. Move about this place. Touch from heart to heart and from breast to breast. Be praised, be magnified, be exalted. In Jesus' name, celebrate the Lord in this place. Come on, lift your voice in this house all today. For the Lord is good and he's greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. The song simply says, the name of Jesus lifted high, lifted high, lifted high. The name of Jesus lifted high. In this place, the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus lifted high, lifted high, lifted high. The
Jesus, Jesus. Oh God, we thank you. Oh, come on, take some time. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're not in a rush around here. Open up your mouth. Thank you, Jesus. Today is a day of declarations in the house. When we're speaking something out of our mouths, to that it will be done this next song is asking the Lord to build his church in us build your church God in us that we may go out and do your work that we may go out and be the light into this dark world how many of you want to be the church on today how many of you are the church Many of you are the church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. On Christ alone, yeah. our chief cornerstone. No other foundation Hallelujah. can we build upon, yeah. not philosophy, yeah. Yeah. nor the wisdom of man, yeah. 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 all other ground, it's sinking sand. Upon this rock, you build your church, and the gates of hell will not prevail. When 
Hallelujah. How many of you want the supernatural on your church? I want the supernatural on my church. I want, I want the favor of God on my church. I want the power of God on my church. Hallelujah. I want the unusual to happen in my church. seen and unseen signs and wonders hey you have your way God build your church hey even in the midst of a pandemic build your church send a fresh wind send a fresh wind we're not dead we're still alive we're still here build us from the ground up build us from the ground From the ground up, oh, build it from the ground up. Hey, build it from the ground up. Oh, build, build it from the ground up. Oh, build it from the ground up. From the ground up, the devil thought he had us, but oh, build us from the ground up, 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 because we're your children. Cause we're your church. Oh. Yeah. Oh Lord, prepare me to be a saint. You. presence of God and singers who don't sing just for a stage but they're here to worship amen they're here to worship so we thank God for them for their labor of love thank you Brandon thank you Casey thank you David thank you
have your Bibles. Let's rest on our feet for the reading of God's word. John, the 13th chapter. John, the 13th chapter. John the 13th chapter, we're going to break in in the lesson at about verse 4, but in your hearing, I want you to go down to verse 12. If you got to say amen, if you don't say hold on, okay. That's all right, John, the 13th chapter, starting at verse 12, and I'll be reading from the King James Version. Y'all got it? Y'all good? So after he had washed their feet and taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and say well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash the feet of one another. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. I want to preach from a subject this morning. Go get your towel. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. thank God uh, for this sermon series and how it has awakened us to be intentional in our growth. I see we got a few visitors. We got a few visitors in the house. Can you just wave your hand? Do we got a few visitors? Okay. Okay. So, amen. So glad. So glad to have you. Just wanted to recognize you all. We are in a series of spiritual disciplines for our visitors and we understand that in order for there to be growth in our Christian walk, there has to be discipline. And so we've dealt with the discipline of the mind from Minister Brown. We've dealt with the discipline of prayer. We've dealt with the discipline of worship, my God, last Sunday. And this Sunday, we're going to deal with the discipline of service. Discipline of service. Serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, it is a discipline and God calls for us to be servants hallelujah servants when you look at the word servant in the Greek it's pronounced doulos and for my note takers because I know utopia is taking notes right now that is d-o-u-l-o-s doulos and it is frequently used to designate a master's slave, but also a follower of Christ, doulos, servant. Servant is, is, is where you don't exercise independence of your will. A servant that is a doulos is one who doesn't move without permission from his master. Uh, uh, doulos is also the word that Christ used to describe himself. In Matthew, I mean in Philippians, the second chapter, the seventh verse, it says that Christ took upon himself the form of a servant. Meaning that he took upon a lower position. Yeah, his position changed, not his person. But he took a lower position and became a doulos. He became a servant. What great example do we have in Jesus Christ? 
Paul, in, in, his, in his Pauline letters, in the epistles, he would always start off, usually in the first verse, he would call himself a bond slave of Christ. Meaning that he was willingly a slave for the work of Christ. I, I understand that this, this, this sermon may be a little, a little heavy for some of us because you realize you have to do something. <laughs> this ain't just about what you're going to get, but what God is supposed to get out of you. Uh, there's another Greek word, diakonos, uh, diakonal. It is, it, is, it is to become an object of another's help or assistance. A diaconal is also used for deacons. Deacons serve and they are the object of somebody else's assistance. They, they help somebody to meet somebody's need to, to serve. And I think in, in these day and times, the church has a lot of knowledge, not enough service. We got bigger buildings, not enough service. Serving, serving is where God's presence is felt in the earth. And when we serve, we make God relevant to somebody's situation. Mm -hmm. when, when, when we serve, we make God relevant to somebody's situation. But you can't serve if you're consumed with yourself. Mm. That's why it's a discipline. Because you've got to learn to die to... You got to learn to put self in subjection to the will of God and be willing to be a object of someone else's assistance. Come on. Why why don't we serve? Christ has given us this amazing example. He took on the form of a servant. Why why don't we serve like we should? It's a lot of Christians but not enough service. Maybe we were never taught. Maybe nobody never correctly taught us that we need to serve. Uh, that, that, that is what's required of us, that we're not just here uh, uh, to, to get our wish list fulfilled, but we're helped to fulfill somebody else's wish list. Maybe we never saw a good example, or uh, this, this is one for me, maybe their love for Jesus didn't mature to the level of service. Thank, thank you, John. Uh, meaning that they only wanted Jesus for what he could do for them. Uh, but, but when it came time for them to be a vessel for Jesus, ah, they, they, they weren't ready for that yet. Their love hadn't matured to that place. Uh, you, you, you've got to understand your serving has to come out of your love for God, not your love just for people. Because if it's just for people, people are going to give you a reason not to serve them. People are going to give you many reasons why to back out, why to abort the mission. But if you understand the assignment, you are once an instrument of sin. But when you come to Christ, you're supposed to be an instrument of righteousness. And the instrument doesn't tell the user or the master what it's going to be used for. Service, service, service is walking the talk. It's easy to talk about being a Christian, but what do you do? Service. Service is rooted in seeing. Help me, Holy Spirit. Service is rooted in seeing. See, we, we could have some papers on the floor, and people will not see those papers. Some people will walk, Sister Norland, they will walk right by them pa papers. Don't pay no mind, don't care. I didn't put it there. But there's somebody, their spirit won't be right until they pick up them papers. See, service is rooted in seeing because there are some people that we're supposed to serve. But if you don't see the need, some people see right through people or right past them. But some people, God will give you the discernment to call out something. Without them telling you, uh, come here, come here, something ain't right. Come here, come on, let's talk. Let's talk. I thought you had to get out of here. That's all right. I got a few more minutes. I got time. I see. I see. I see. 
anybody that th- don't, that can't find nothing to do, you blind. There's plenty to do. Do you see? Look in your community. I'm sorry. Look in your home. Let's start there. Look in your home. Service. Look at somebody say service ought to start at home. Yeah, because, because it's, it's, a, it's a crying shame to serve the world and your home is neglected. Your home is treated differently. You, you got to serve. You got to serve your spouse. You got to serve your children. You got to serve your mom and dad. You got to serve. Service should start at home. And that's a good place to start because you know a lot about them Negroes. I mean, them people. So um, you got a lot of reasons why you wouldn't want to serve them. Oh, but that's good testing ground to be like Christ and love the unlovable. Come on, somebody. You got to serve. You got to be a doulos. You got to be a slave. Huh? You got to be a slave for Christ. First Peter 4 and 10, Utopia, I know you're writing down the scriptures. First Peter 4 and 10 and verse 11. I want you all to hear this scripture. It says, as every man has received the gift... Even so, minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. (laughs) That's a tough scripture from Peter. Because what Peter said is that each and every one of y'all have a gift sitting inside of you, at least one, but I doubt it's just one. But each one of you have a gift that you have already received. And that gift is not to build your empire. That, that gift ain't for you to secure the bag. <laughs> that, that, that gift isn't to push your brand. But that gift is to minister to somebody else. You, see, see, sometimes you ain't supposed to pray. You're the answer. Sometimes you're not supposed to pray. I know, I know y'all don't want to hear this this morning, but you got to hear it. Sometimes you ain't supposed to pray and go get somebody else. Sometimes you're the answer. Well, 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 pastor, what do you mean? Well, I ain't got it. it. It ain't what you don't have. It's what you do have, what God has already placed in you. And a lot of times God will strategically put you in a place to meet somebody's need. Huh? Each, each and every one of y'all have a gift, but it's not to be for selfish gain. I want to pull out something before I get to John 13. He says here, he says, and let him do it as the ability which God giveth. Let him do it as the ability which God giveth, meaning that you're never to use this gift independent of God. Don't try to step ahead of God. Stay with God. Because I know I'm talking about people that need to help more, but then there's some folks that's too zealous. And you got to stop and pray and say, God, what do you want me to do first? Because there's some of us, we're, we're, we're too zealous and we want to be the Savior. Ah, you got to use discernment and say, God, what do, you wanna, what do you want me to do? But it has to be through God's strength, not your own. Because in your own strength, you will burn out. In your own strength, you'll quit. You'll give up. You'll become discouraged. Amen? You'll get tired. You, 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 you don't want to do it no more. But when God gives you the strength, you have dunamis power that will enable you and sustain you to help serve somebody else. In John, the 13th chapter, we have Jesus in the upper room with his disciples. Jesus is in the upper room with his disciples, and it's, it's almost time, it's almost time for him to go to the cross. But, but there's, a, there's an issue, there's an issue with the disciples. The issue is that the disciples are arguing amongst themselves who is going to have the most authority in God's kingdom. They're arguing amongst themselves who would be the leader and who would have the power. Jesus seeing... <laughs> sees a need, realizes that he has to teach them a lesson before Judas comes up. He has to teach them a lesson before the Romans come and arrest him. Uh, He doesn't use words. First, he uses action. 
yep, yep. He, he uses action. And even though he is the Lord of lords, even though he's the king of kings, he grabs his towel. Go to the fourth verse. Go to the fourth verse. He rises from supper, laid aside his garments, and took a towel and girded himself. And after he poured water in a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Whew, my God. Here, the master becomes the slave. Here, the sovereign becomes the servant. Y'all with me? He's hearing them argue. He's tired of it. Takes off his towel, I mean, takes off his garments and, and ties a towel around his waist and begins to bend down and wash the disciples' feet. Look at his humility. This is the Son of God. This is Jesus Christ. This is royalty. Oh, my God. But here, here Jesus knows because of the, 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 the time that, that is at hand, he knows he has to teach them a lesson by accident. And he teaches that lesson through humility. But real humility is a selfless act. Let me show you how low Jesus was. See, what, what Jesus was doing, a Jewish slave wouldn't do. What Jesus was doing, they would have Gentile slaves do because they felt that Gentiles were lower than Jews. And here Jesus, not too high and mighty. We don't serve an arrogant God. And I, I just want y'all to know, I don't, I, pray for me, I struggle with arrogant people. Because at the end of the day, you are who you are because of God, not because of you. I, I, I don't care how laid your edges is. I don't, I don't care how stacked your money is. I, I don't care what you got out there in that parking lot. You are who you are because God gave it to you. Uh-huh. Here, here, here Christ. Here Christ takes a towel. I think, I think when he took that towel, the disciples probably, they stopped talking, probably embarrassed. Because their teacher, their rabbi, did something that they should have been doing. If anybody, not the host, he's the host. The host ain't supposed to be down here. They stop. Puts that towel around his waist. And he begins to wash their feet. As he's washing their feet, saints, 6 verse says, and he comes to Peter. And says unto him, Peter saith unto him, Lord, does thou wash my feet? You know, Peter always got to be the one to open his mouth. Always. Jesus answered and said unto him, what I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter, Peter said unto him, uh, thou shalt never wash my feet. And Jesus said, if I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Peter goes on the other side of the situation and says, Well, Lord, not my feet only. Wash also my hands and my head. Jesus saith unto him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. But ye are clean, but not all. First thing I told you, grab your towel. Why? Because Jesus grabbed his towel. But the second point, it's a little difficult to explain. Watch your step. Watch your step. In, 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 in this conversation between Peter and Jesus, that, that topic is about holiness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, the topic is about holiness. And so what he was saying is, reason why he had to wash their feet is because when they walked to the dinner place, okay, y'all stay with me. This is, this is a little challenging. They walked to the dinner place, they would step in the dusty roads, 
And they would step in manure and camels and all that stuff and rocks. And so when they get to a dinner place or a place of fellowship, it was customary to wash off all that stuff from their feet. Because that would be, yeah. Because you got to understand, too, some of y'all may not know, they didn't have tables and chairs like we have. When they ate at a dinner table, they sat like this and reclined. So their feet was where the food was. So you can imagine somebody coming to the dinner table and their feet ain't been washed. Bruh, you ain't see the basin? Bruh. Hey, man, you over here by the bread, man. Now, the whole body doesn't need to be washed. Just the part that was contaminated. That's why Jesus said, now you got to look at it in the spiritual. Jesus said, I don't need to wash everything. But he was talking from a spiritual perspective. What he was saying, y'all have already seen, received me as your savior. That's why he said, what I do, you don't understand right now. You've already received me as the savior. So I don't need to wash because you've already been washed in the word. But you done said something you shouldn't have said. Let me wash your feet. <laughs> You done did something you shouldn't have did. Let me wash your feet. <laughs> you done went somewhere you shouldn't have went. Let me wash the contaminated part. See, as we serve and as we are humble, we still got to watch our step. Because what can happen is you can track your mess into somebody else's life. You can track your issues into somebody else's situation. Peter not understanding what he was saying. Peter like, Lord, if that means I can't have no part with you, wash everything. He says, you don't understand what I'm saying now. But you'll understand later that we would be washed by the word of God. So it, it, was, a, it was teaching a lesson, but it had a spiritual significance that we have to be holy. Jesus cleaning their feet, washes their feet as a humble servant. Y'all excuse me, I got cotton mouth today. I don't know if my spirit is nervous, my flesh is nervous. I'm all right though, I feel good. But Rick, my mouth will not let me talk today. <clears throat> but, but notice, Jesus says, y'all are clean, but not everyone. He also washed Judas' feet. Let, let's, talk, let's talk, Sister Viv. Huh? Because Jesus taught us in that example that we don't just wash our friends' feet. But I got to wash the feet, Royce. Of the people that have talked about me, I got to wash the feet of the people that ran my name through the mud. I got to wash the people who I thought was always going to be there but left. I got to wash the feet of the people who forgot what I did for them. I've got to wash the feet. See, 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 you find out you a real Christian when you got to serve the folks that you can't stand. And do it. From a pure intent. Yeah. Not a place of, um, come here. <sighs> you good. Nope. Nope. Somebody walk in and did you wrong. Remember, a doulos does not act independent from his master. That means I don't get to operate in my feelings. I have to understand the assignment. Your ex may walk through that door today. A slave does not do what it wants to do. A slave does what the master tells. Mount Hebron, what a testimony that we would serve our enemies. What, 
what a, what a witness if we would serve people who can't help us and serve us back. What, what a display of the power of God to meet a need without looking for an applause. That's the type of church that he wants to build. A, ch a church that serves anybody. Anybody. If a Muslim walk in here, serve them. If an atheist walk in here, serve them. If a Republican or Democrat, whatever you don't agree with, walk in here, serve them. Because my love, the God, the love that, it, that was displayed on me from God didn't have a preference. Royce, his love reached down in my mess. Based on where I was, he had no reason to love me. Who am I to take his love and, and pick and choose who get it? I am not that one. God, whoever you want to use me to love, whoever you want to use me to serve, I'll go. I'll be your doulos. I'll be your servant. I'll be your diakonos. How can I experience that type of love and then turn around and act like? He says here, he took his towel, told us to watch our step. And then this is the last point. He said, do and be blessed. Somebody say it with me. Do and be blessed. Look at your neighbor on the right. Say, do and be blessed. Look at your neighbor on the other side and say, do and be blessed. As we're talking about spiritual discipline, the, the emphasis is to encourage you to do something that will bring about divine results. Do something. God doesn't bless you based on your knowledge. But when that knowledge is put into action... He, he, he washes their feet. I'm, I'm almost done. He takes his garments. He sets, sets them down again. He said unto them, know what I, verse 12, I'm at verse 12 for my Bible readers. Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me master and Lord. Ye say, well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and master, have washed your feet, ye also Ought to wash one another's feet. Hmm. Hmm. If he's our Lord, and if washing feet was not beneath him, then it's not beneath you. <sighs> huh? Now, now, Dr. Yvonne, if the master son of God comes down to your level and becomes a slave, becomes a servant, where does that put us? Puts us on our master's level. So when he went down, we came up. Because he dignified servanthood. He honored servanthood. Never Feel like you're being used or that you're less than because you serve when your master, when your master, huh? When your master was willing to come down, huh? And serve and be a slave then it is not beneath you. Now, you got to look and see who God wants you to serve. Hmm? You got you to gotta look around and see who God wants you to meet a need. Huh? You got to look around and see. Come here, bro. Come here. Yeah, yeah, come here. Come here. You gotta look around and see. You gotta look around and see. You 
I look around and see. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. You got to look around and see. You got to look around and see. And show somebody that you see them. You got to show somebody that you see them. Because if my master, if my master is water, if my master can wash me, I don't feel any less than because I'm washing. Now what you got to understand is that washing feet is a good ceremonial act. But he didn't literally mean for us to leave out of here and wash feet. I'm not saying don't wash nobody's feet because there's a spiritual situation that happens here. But our washing feet in 2021 is saying, hey, do you need somebody to talk to? Let me wash your feet. Hey, I saw your tire was flat. Did you, did you need help changing it? Hey, I saw you was doing a fundraiser. Let me see how I can get some, some funds together. I'll talk to some people. Hey, I saw you going through a situation. Let me wash your feet. Let me show you. Hey, I heard you just had a baby. Let me see. You need some pull-ups. You need some wet wipes. Let me wash your feet. Hey, hey, I heard, I heard that you was having some issues. Somebody had to go in the hospital. You need somebody to wash the kids while you at the hospital. Hey, I heard there was a situation you was going through. Do you need somebody to cook dinner for you? We'll cook dinner while you're going to handle that situation. Let me wash your feet. Hey, hey, I, I know. I know you're tired. I'll do heaven's hair. Get some rest. Let, let me wash your feet. Hey, hey, I know what it is. I'll get it done for you. 2022 washing feet means meeting the need. Huh? It means meeting the need. And we can't be so consumed with our needs. Because guess what? Your needs being met are rooted in meeting the needs of others. They don't teach that about prosperity gospel, do they? Why don't teach that? Your blessing, your breakthrough, your deliverance could very well be in the serving of somebody else. When you put yourself on the back burner, you, y'all don't believe me. Y'all think I'm talking Judaism. No, I'm not. Look here. Look here. Verse 15. He says, uh, 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 no, verse 17. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye whoo, that word happy, thank you, in the Greek, means blessed. Blessed means highly favored. Your highly favored is connected to your servanthood. Hey, 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 can you think of somebody that you grew up with that always gave and never lacked? I got some people. He says here that your favor, the blessing of God, is on those who serve others. Some of you have been so heavy and so down because all you've been thinking about is yourself. Can I say it like it is? You've been so drowned in your own pity. And I'm not saying what you're going through ain't real. What I'm saying is try God. Do what God say do. Follow Jesus' example. And say, okay, 
Why am I sitting here worried about something I can't change? Who can I help change then? Who can I help serve? Who can I help bless then? Because I can't change my situation. But maybe I got something there to change your situation. So, I want, I want somebody this morning to think about what God is laying on your heart to do as far as serving in this church, outside of this church. I'm talking to somebody this morning that said they was done serving. I'm talking to somebody this morning that's saying, I don't deserve to serve. Oh, you don't? Okay, so how is it that they was deserving to serve, but they betrayed him a few hours later and still served in acts? Okay, mm-hmm. Come on. I'm talking to somebody to say, I, I, they got low self-esteem. Pastor, I don't know my Bible like that. I don't know my Bible like that to serve. Okay, okay. You ain't got to know it all. You just have to, he just has to have your heart. Huh? He, he just has to have your heart. And so this morning... I believe by submission to serve that some yokes can be broken today. I believe that by, by you surrendering and saying, God, I'm tired of doing it my way. I'm about to be available. I'm not about to be a Christian that's volunteers. I'm about to be a doulos. I'm about to be a slave to Jesus. I'm about, I'm about to be a servant to Jesus Christ. I, I didn't served me long enough and I ain't got nowhere. I didn't serve me long enough and I keep... I, I want, I encourage somebody this morning to come and get your towel. I prayed over these towels. They're not powerful, but I prayed over. I said, God, when they grab these towels, may it be a reminder to serve. Stay right there. Come on. Stay right there. Come on. Even if you don't have a towel, but because I only had a couple dollars. I only had a couple dollars. And uh, I, so you might have to go get you a towel and say, Pastor, pray over. But, but this morning, this morning, this morning, the yoke can be broken by a willingness to surrender. And say, God, I'll serve. I'll be your eyes. I'm not going to look past my spouse. I'm not going to look past my children. I'm not going to look past my neighbor. I'm not going to look past my community. I am not ashamed of the gospel, but it's the power of God unto salvation. Send me, God. Use my feet. Use my hands. Use my mouth. I'm your doulos. Mm. 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 Hallelujah. And this morning, for those that have come down, your heart is softened. I pray in the area it's been hard. For those of you that are here at the altar this morning, you no longer interrogate what he tells you to do. Stop analyzing. Stop overthinking. Give him an irrevocable yes this morning. Give him a yes you won't take back this morning. And say, God, till death do us part. I am your servant. See, in the Old Testament, and then we're going to pray. In the Old Testament, sometimes people had to go into slavery to pay off their debt. This Old Testament. So they had to serve the person they owed the debt to. But when their debt was cleared, and there was a year for them to be released... The slave had an opportunity or a choice. He could choose. The slave could choose to be free. Or they would take him to the gate and put a, a hole in their ear. The hole in the ear symbolized, I'm not going to leave my master. Every day you got to make a choice. I ain't saying go get your ears pierced, but is your heart pierced? To say, Lord, I'm not going to leave my master. Whatever you desire for me to do, whatever your will is, I will serve. I'll serve Judas. 
I'll serve Peter. I'll serve in the good times. I'll serve in the bad times. I'll serve in season and out of season. I'll serve when everybody's around. I'll serve when I'm alone. Hallelujah. 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 God, consecration. Consecration. Set yourself aside. Consecration. They would anoint the priest before he served as an act of consecration. Meaning, I see you. I see you. Baby boy, he can use your heart too. Right now, God, use it for your kingdom, your young and willing servant, your young vessel. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I'm available. They're available in the mighty name of Jesus. God, if you tell me to fast, I'll fast. If you tell me to pray, I'll pray. If you tell me to study, I'll study. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's consecration. Today is a day of consecration. You're willing to no longer be an instrument of unrighteousness, but an instrument of righteousness unto the kingdom of God. A vessel of honor, a vessel of honor, used for the glory of God. God, I thank you for every yoke being broken today. I speak it by faith. I speak it by faith. In the mighty name of Jesus, starting with the heart and the mind, God. God, they got their towels. But most importantly, you got their hearts. They got their towels. But most importantly, you got their hearts. I'm saying this over steps like, but if for some of y'all too, don't grow weary. Don't grow weary. Stay the course. For in due season. In due season. Hallelujah. Don't grow weary. 
I know you're tired, but don't give up. Crawl if you have to. Crawl if you have to. Cry when you have to. Get back to where you're supposed to be. Get back to your post. Get back to who you are in him. Get back to your identity in him. You're a giver. You're a giver. Hallelujah. God, we bind discouragement in the name of Jesus. We bind discouragement in the name of Jesus. It will not determine our next step. It will not determine our next step. In the mighty name of Jesus. your towel but he has your heart Stay right where you are. Hear me, hear me real quick in the spirit. Shamika, my wife said that while pastor was preaching and talking about a doulos, some of you have heard of a doula. <laughs> if you haven't heard of a doula, a doula would be the female version of the servant. But we know in the natural that a doula helps. <laughs> a doula helps to push out the baby. A doula's job is to help birth what is inside. If a doula ever decides to quit in the middle of her task, then the life that is inside of you. <laughs> can't come forth so I know in the natural a doula is a female but I'm here to tell you that we got some male and female doulas in the house and your service is necessary to help push the birth out the life that's inside of you brother I'm here to help push out of you my service is necessary your service is necessary if you quit now Somebody won't get to experience the life that's inside of them. Your service is necessary. I know pastor is praying and and he's busy, but I thank God for his doulas, doulos.
I know it, it ain't about him. It never is. He's the humblest man I know. But through a pandemic, while nobody was here, when he couldn't look out into the audience and see a face, when his voice was the only voice in the room, he still served. His wife by his side, serving. I thank God for such a doulos that we have. And I pray that, that God would impart in him a hundredfold to the point of overflow. As a matter of fact, he's already doing it, and that's why we get to experience these types of Sunday mornings. He's already doing it. This is the overflow. Some of you have been serving and feel like you've gotten no results. Some of you have been pressing and pushing and you feel like God ain't even acknowledged you. But all I've been reminded of this, this whole time you've been preaching is the scripture that says, Grow not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap a harvest if you don't. Saints, we got to stop looking for the results and just focus on him. Ryan, they said, Nehemiah said, remember your Lord. <laughs> remember your Lord and fight. Remember your Lord and serve. It's not for his hand, it's for his face. You're not looking for his hand. The reward is his face. You get to see him. You get to see him for who he is. You get to see him. That's the reward. Forget the, forget the gifts. Forget the money. Forget the tangible. You get to see him. No greater reward. Grab your towel. Grab your towel. I challenge you for a pastor that if you didn't get one from the stage, go buy one. Hang it on your wall. Write servant on it. Look at it every day. So that you will know what you got to do every day. This ain't a Sunday morning thing. This ain't a because I saw a pastor, I'm a servant again. No, no. This needs to become everyday practice, habit, habitual. I'm a servant. Servant at work. Servant at school. Servant on the street. Servant in church. Servant at Walmart. Servant giant eagle. I don't care where I am. My task and my job never leaves me. Servant. Hallelujah. And so, Father, I pray over each and every soul in this room that if, never, if there's never been conviction, let it be so today. That servitude is a universal call. That if I'm a follower of Christ, then I must be a servant as he was. Humble us now, God. That nothing is above us Nothing is too low beneath us that we can't go forth and serve in. Let us be ready at a moment's notice to serve. Serve as doulos. Serve as doula. <laughs> Help us, Lord God, to move to a place of service that will bring life out of individuals. Lord, pierce our ears today. That even with the choice to not serve, we choose to still do so. We belong to you, God. Let us wear our shackles of servant proudly because of who they came from. We don't mind to be in bounds be, because it's by you. <laughs> 
we stay shackled, God. Servants and slaves unto you, that you would do as you feel. Soften our hearts and open our ears, Lord God, that we would be able to receive direction. And when that direction comes, we move instantly. Give us the same heart that the disciples had as they were sitting there in their actual careers, fishing for a living. And when Jesus said, come, they dropped everything. And the Bible says, straightway followed you. Let us drop everything. Straightway follow you, God. For whoever and in whatever, if you say it, we shall go. We decree it and declare it. It is our resolve today that as we leave from this place, we shall serve. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Who else, who else want to take a towel? Who else want to take a towel? Didn't have one. Did somebody want to take one? Anybody else? Lord, if I could buy you a gift to show you my love, show you how I feel, but it wouldn't matter what I'd have to give. I will find a way to get it for you, but unfortunately, that's not the case, for we both know I don't have bank anyway, but I wouldn't let it affect my presentation to you, so this is what I bring here is my heart, my mind, Lord, here's my life, my everything, take it, it's yours, Lord, oh, here is my heart, my mind, Lord, here's my life, my everything take it is yours alone that's what we're giving today as a doulos here is my heart my mind lord here's my life my everything take it is yours alone it's all I have to give, yeah. Oh, it's all I have to give. Hallelujah. Hey, it's all I have. I'm giving myself away. I'm giving myself away. It's all I have to give. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's all I have to give. I'm giving myself away. It's all I have. Giving myself away, but it's all I have to give. You can have it all. I give it away. Hey, it's all I have to give. It's all I have to give. It's all I have to give. Here is my. Everything. You get the 
Thank you, Lord. Even though I'm broken, it's all I have to give. Even though I'm tired, it's all I have to give. It's all I have, it's all I have to give. You can have my mind. Hey, you can have. Yours, oh Lord. One more time, we're gonna get out of here. Here is here is my heart, my mind. Oh Lord, Lord my, my everything. everything. My everything. Take it. So it is yours, oh Lord. Oh, it's all I have. Father, thank you for your presence today. Thank you for your word. As we discipline ourselves to serve, help us to be your eyes. Help us to see the need and have the heart to be your vessel to meet the need. Rather near, far, big or small. You left us a pattern. You left us an example. And you said that if I've washed your feet, you wash one another. God, let one another be in our spirit. One another. Help one another. Pray for one another. Strengthen one another. Serve one another. Yes. Love one another. Yes. We got the towel. You got our hearts. Fathers, we leave from this place, but never from your presence. Let traveling grace be upon us. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. And my brothers and sisters say amen. amen. God bless you, Mount. Hebrew 216. Go and serve. Go and serve. 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 Love you.